Hello everybody, today we're going to take a look at a few new things on the WebEx board, mainly the new UI editor, so the buttons that you add to the interface. Uh, we're going to take a look at that specifically, but with that comes a new way to build out web applications, much simpler, uh, no coding experience required, so we're going to check that out. We're also going to look at how to add custom icons to your user interface objects as well to give a little bit more of a uh, specific idea to the user as to what the application is and what it does. So if you're new here, hit that subscribe button. Otherwise, we're going to dive in and check it out firsthand. To get started, log into your endpoint as an administrator and click into the in-room controls configuration panel. Uh, if you're not familiar with this, I do have another video that talks about this in far more depth link at the top uh, corner of the video here if you want to check it out. But anyway, this is the new view. You'll notice uh, it has some different uh, different things on the screen here. It talks about different customization options and it's calling these options activities. So let's click a new activity option here and uh, these will be items that you're somewhat familiar with. Well the first is a panel. So this is a control panel again that you have seen before. There is an action button, which in the past we would actually put a control panel that did not have a page or really any content to it. Uh, so an action button has its own set of controls there now. And finally, we now have a web apps button as well. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and add each one of each of these to the screen because we're going to look at the properties of really all three of them and then from there, I'm going to show you a few of the ways you can, we'll say, massage the configuration to get it to do things that it's really not designed to do as the way it's built currently. It's not really a hack. It's, it's, it's all good. So uh, anyway, let's dive in and check it out. First, I'm just going to throw a panel and an action button up there real quick. And then I'm going to show you the new WebAct feature. All right, so I have a panel and I have a button. Now let's add a web app and see what that experience is like. You'll notice it still has a panel ID, uh, panel three. It has a name, web app, which we can customize. What we'll do is we'll, uh, well, let's make a Tech Catalyst web app. Give it a name. You then actually put in the URL. And finally, you can put an icon for this web app. So what I'm going to do is use the favorite icon that's, I wouldn't say completely universal, but very widely used with most web pages. And it is simply the URL to the root directory and favicon.ico. When we're done with all of this, we can deploy this to the video system and I'll show you a screenshot of the WebEx board so that you can see what all of these look like. As you can see, what's happened is we have our three panel options. We have a panel, which is a control panel. We have a button, which is essentially the same icon. I just changed the color. And we have the Tech Catalyst YouTube channel link uh, or web app that has the favorite icon from YouTube pulled in as the icon itself. So pretty cool, uh, gives you a little bit better idea as to what that is. The YouTube icon obviously is almost universally recognized. So it's, uh, you know, changes and enhances the user experience a little bit. Now, the next thing I wanna show you though, is how do we do this for non web apps? So let's go ahead and try a few things and uh, let's open up the XML that defines each of these items and I will uh, show you a little bit more as to what is going on. From here, the thing we got to do is download the XML that defines these panel objects. To do that, we go to the far right hand uh, upper corner. You want to actually export to file. This will prompt you to download or open the room control config XML file. We'll go ahead and open it. You'll notice a few things about this room control XML. One is it is version 1.6, whereas you've noticed uh, if you've looked at these XML file in the past, they are lower version numbers. So uh, likely older versions could be imported on newer systems, 
but the inverse is probably not going to be true, and you'll see why here in just a second. This is a panel object. This is the, the panel itself that had that widget and toggle button enabled. Uh, you will also notice the activity type. This is a new field. This is listed as custom. Likewise, our sample uh, button right on the home screen that, um, that we built that is yellow. You can see it in the background here. Uh, color is defined. I had called it Zoom Meeting, and it is also a custom field. Now, the next and last item is the web application. You can see it is an activity type of web app, so a little bit different there. The activity data is that YouTube URL to the Tech Catalyst YouTube channel, and the icon URL is youtube.com slash favorite icon or fav, favicon.ico. Now, you may already know where I'm going with this, but if we wanted to enable our panel object to join the Zoom meeting, uh, again, we would tie a macro to the back side of this. Uh, really, the, the only thing we have to do is go ahead and add in a, uh, an icon URL field. We'll get that lined up. Uh, I am calling this icon from a local server that I have, and I have the Zoom, uh, you know, blue background camera logo file on my uh, local web server here. You can use this uh, however, however you would like. You just have to be able to access that file, and the system has to be able to download it and read it. From here, go ahead and save that file, and we're going to get it re-imported. Jumping back to the endpoint, I always like to remove all panels before I re-import just to know that I have a clean slate. Probably not necessary, to be honest, but I am then going to import from a file. I'm going to locate that control config uh, XML file that we have here, open it up. You'll notice everything is re-imported. You still actually have that light bulb icon, uh, and you see nothing uh, that mentions the zoom icon. Uh, if you will. Our web app is still enabled as well, but now let's go ahead and deploy it and see what actually happens on the WebEx board. Hit the blue up arrow to push this to your endpoint, and away we go. Assuming the system could go ahead and access that file, that logo file or that icon file correctly, you should now have the zoom icon or whatever icon as part of the UI on your video endpoint. You can see it here. Uh, the title remains, um, but that's really all there is to it. A little mis manipulation of the XML and uh, knowing where to pull in a, a logo from, and you're off to the races. Hopefully you found that a helpful introduction. I know it's still there's still some workarounds that are built in there, but uh, anyway, let me know in the comments section below with questions, comments, tips, or tricks, and I want to thank you for watching.